Hi, welcome to John's Tech and Travel. There's a lot of information on the internet right now about building out your own cargo trailer. It's become a very popular thing for people to do. If you build out your own cargo trailer, you can make it exactly what you want it to be. But the question is, is that the right thing for you to do? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's start by talking about the pros. Why would you want to do your own cargo trailer conversion? The first reason that I can think of is you can make it what you want it to be. When you look at RVs that you're buying off a lot or buying used from a private seller, you're getting the floor plan and the features that they want to sell to you. But if you build your own, you can make it what you want it to be. For example, you, if you want a king-size bed, you can put a king-size bed in your trailer. If you want bunk beds, if you want a... Um, a uh, full size bed. I opted for a queen size bed and when you choose the size of bed that you want you aren't limited to the RV size beds. So I, I never really understood what an RV queen is. Why would you want a smaller queen than a queen size if you want a queen size? You get my point? Second, you can make it as elaborate as you want it to be. Uh, if you want to keep it simple you can throw a mattress on the floor and take off uh, if you want to go a little more elaborate, you can put in a futon. If you want to save floor space because you're making it into a toy hauler, you can have beds that fold up along the sides like a lot of RVs have. Uh, you can put in a Murphy style bed where the whole bed flops up against the wall. Uh, in my particular case, I decided that I wanted a bed that would raise to the ceiling so I can ride my Can-Am Spider in here. That thing takes up six feet by nine feet. It's a pretty good size footprint for that thing and so I needed a lot of space for it. So raising the bed to the ceiling was the best option for me. Complicated, but you know, challenge accepted. When it comes to the kitchen, you can make that as elaborate as you want also. Uh, some people like a full range, full size refrigerator, uh, hot and cold running water, uh, a cooktop, uh, a microwave oven, there are all kinds of options you can add, but if you do a cargo trailer conversion, you can add things that match your cooking style. In our case, we decided to go with just cold running water. We're not, we don't have hot running water in our trailer, and a lot of people do put hot running water in. Uh, we decided that we don't need to do a lot of cooking inside, but we like to have a microwave, so I have a small microwave here. Uh, we decided that uh, a toaster oven would be great, and so we added that. Then the truth is we do most of our cooking outside with an electric frying pan. That's our choice. When it comes to being elaborate, you can also decide what electrical system you want. You can put in a 20 amp electrical system, a 30 amp electrical system, a 50 amp system. If you're not doing hot and cold running water, you might be able to get by with a 30, maybe even a 20. I have never needed more than 15 amps, but I have a 30 amp system. A little cheaper than going with a 50 amp system. Electrical systems can be taken to the level of sophistication that you want and you'll find that you can add all kinds of electrical things including solar panels on the roof, converters for AC to DC, for DC to AC. Um, again, it will match the style you want and it has to match what your needs are. If you're going to be boondocking you know, with, with no hookups then you need to consider that. If you're not going to be boondocking, you can make it a lot less complicated and a lot cheaper. You can take your electrical system and all the systems in your trailer to a level of total self-reliance, which is a huge advantage, but that might cost you quite a bit also. There are a lot of people who do it. I think it's fantastic. You can make this trailer to be the epitome of everything you want in an RV. When it comes to pros for building out your own cargo trailer, one of the most important ones is that you can control the costs. Um, you might have a trailer you're already using for business or for personal use and you want to build that out. That's great because the trailer itself is going to be the most costly thing that's going to really affect your budget. You can buy a brand new trailer, you can buy a used trailer. You control that and um, the budget is a really important part of this. It's your budget, 
it's your trailer you pick what you want i'm not going to go into the types of trailers that you can buy in this video but you know, give that some serious consideration where are you going to start the trailer that you buy is going to determine and limit what you can and can't do with it another advantage of building out your own cargo trailer is that you can decide how heavy and how big it is thus determining how big of a uh, tow vehicle you're going to need um, I use a half ton pickup truck to haul this it seems perfectly adequate when you check the numbers it might be getting kind of close and that's a consideration you don't want to try to haul something that's too big and too heavy with too small of a vehicle you can get yourself into big trouble doing that but if you keep the trailer smaller lighter you're going to be a lot safer in the long run and that's going to affect your budget too you can decide if you want to, want to have a trailer that's really tall. Uh, a lot of people are going for full seven feet, seven and a half foot trailers. Mine's about uh, six and a half feet. Perfectly adequate for me and what we do. Uh, would another half foot be great? Fan it'd be fantastic, but I don't absolutely need that. So a little bit of cost saving here, a little bit of size and weight saving also. We just don't have that extra six inches that some people have. We find six and a half feet to be totally adequate for this size of a trailer. You should consider livability. Uh, of course, the size of the trailer comes with certain considerations. What do you want to put into it? And again, this is a real pro because you get to decide. Do you want just a bed? Do you want that kitchen and a bed? Do you want to, um, do you want to have a bathroom in it too? Uh, I chose just put a toilet in. We rely on on mostly on state park uh, facilities and so we're pretty close to a bathhouse most of the time one thing that I did want in, in mind is a, a closet right behind me here is my coat closet uh, we take our motorcycle with us and so we wanted a closet for our jackets and our helmets and that's worked out really well for us you need to consider too do you want to take a vehicle with you that you're going to be riding you know a couple of e-bikes uh, kayaks canoes could all fit inside along with your Can-Am Spider like me or a, a Harley trike or a Honda Goldwing or a side-by-side -side or a UTV or an ATV I've even seen smart cars inside of cargo trailer conversions it's all up to you with a cargo trailer conversion the decisions are all yours let's talk about some of the cons now what are the negatives of doing your own cargo trailer conversion first of all you have to do all the work and it is a lot of work more than what you might see on some of the YouTube channels where today we're working on this we're going to put in this countertop um, and the truth is I typically have three or four projects going at the same time because while I'm waiting for the finish to dry on this countertop I can be in my garage doing other things and I found that it's a lot of work I have a lot of hours into this trailer if you are not up to doing that kind of work, ask yourself, do I have others close to me who will help me out? Um, do I have people who are going to step up and help me finish this project? You don't want to be that person who starts and two months down the road is putting it up for sale. It costs you a lot of money to get there, a lot of time, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. So consider that. Do you have the time to do this? You're doing a lot of, well, in my case, I have kitchen cabinets that I built myself. I have a bed that I built myself. Um, it, it, it takes a lot of time to, to do this and to do painting and to, and to install things and be creative. Uh, sometimes while the paint was drying, I'm standing there saying, is that really what I want it to be? What's the investment in time now to do that again if I have to? Uh, you know. Second. Are you ready to plan, design, and build? All that takes place in this small space here. Uh, I'm not a great draftsman, and a lot of what I see on YouTube are people who are really good with, with uh, CAD. I do some of it, but I'm not that great at it that I'm going to lay out an entire trailer. Uh, the learning curve on that was just too high for me, so I decided I would just come in and plan this out myself. And so one day I came out with a roll of blue tape and a Sharpie marker and I started at the back and I worked my, my way up. I put 
trash. Uh, I put blue tape right on the wall saying what was going to go in that spot. A cabinet at the top, a cabinet at the bottom, uh, a hook here to hang something on, uh, cabinets over here for, or shelves over here to put uh, the microwave and the toaster oven on. Uh, where's the paper towel holder going to be? You know, blue tape. Where am I going to have power outlets? Yeah, blue tape with Sharpie marker. I just laid the, laid the whole thing out that way. And then I started buying materials and building. But it's a lot of work. You have to have a little bit of creativity uh, to go along with that. Because you're, you're going to do, like I said, the planning, the designing, and the building all yourself. Um, because of the variation in widths, lengths, and shapes of trailers, there's no one design that's going to be one size fits all here. You're going to have to do it all yourself. Um, what skills do you have? Have you ever built anything? Have you, ever, have you ever used a saw? Have you ever cut a board? Have you ever cut a piece of plastic? Remember, you're working with different materials, and so you have to be familiar with those materials, too. So how handy are you? What skills do you have that are going to contribute to this project? Do you have the tools you're going to need? Uh, some people have a garage full of uh, great tools, or your dad has those tools, or a good friend has those tools, and they're going to let you use them. Um, in my case, I've had, I've had a circular saw all my life, almost all my life, um, and a good circular saw. But I decided to invest in a Craig jig to do cutting. I don't want to put out the money for a track saw, those can be very expensive, but the Craig saw guide really helped me get these cabinets done quickly. It cost me a few bucks, but it wasn't an end of the world deal breaker. Uh, but you do need drills, and screwdrivers, and wrenches, and saws. And uh, there may be a few things you have to go out and buy. But do you have those tools available to you, or, or are you willing to go out and get them? Next, do you have a place to do the work? I've got my trailer parked right beside my garage. It's too big to fit into the garage. It's too high. Most garage stalls just aren't that high. Uh, some people on, on uh, social media that I've seen have large pole barns or steel buildings that they're able to pull their trailer right into, work on it there, out of the elements. That's a real advantage. Uh, there were days back in January, February, March where it was really cold and I just wasn't willing to come out here and work, uh, work on this trailer. Didn't have heat in it then. Uh, that is one of the first things that I installed, but that took some time to get that up and running. When the weather warmed up in March, April, May, it was a lot easier to come out here and work. And that's when I got the lion's share of this done. So I've got a park beside my garage. I can do work in the garage. I can cut things. I can come out here and work. If you can't keep your trailer close to your work area, that's a real disadvantage because you are very limited in size here and you probably don't want to do cutting and sanding inside your trailer especially as you're finishing out one end maybe working toward the back you think you can do that sanding back there sanding is very dusty you've got to have a workshop or a place to do your cutting and sanding in addition to where you're installing stuff in your trailer most people like me have their trailers parked right beside their house. If you have the luxury of having that indoor place, that's fantastic. But if you don't have any place at all where you can keep the trailer, make sure you come up with a good plan before you buy it. You do want it close to your workshop so you can take measurements, so you can do installations easily, so all your tools are handy. Just a little note here before we park the trailer beside the house, I did call our local municipality here in Pennsylvania and I asked am I allowed to have a trailer parked in my lawn and they said yes. They didn't say it had to be anywhere in particular on the lawn, they just said it can't be on the street. And so I backed it in beside the garage and that's where it's been ever since. Unless we're out using it of course. The next con, the next negative thing here is money. It does take some money, not as much perhaps as buying a an RV and maybe you could even buy a good used RV for less. There's an expense to doing all this. You got to buy the trailer, you got tools, you got materials and so make sure you work out your budget ahead of time or it might surprise you. It can be relatively expensive. The cost of materials right now is up. The cost of tools is up too. And so if you don't already have some of those things on hand, um, plan accordingly. Is your cargo trailer conversion going to be a rewarding experience? 
If you're able to do the work, you'll get the rewards and it can be a great thing. I sure hope you go for it. Put your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're considering doing your own cargo trailer conversion, check out my video on cargo trailer controversies. That will help you to make a lot of the decisions you're going to have to make in building out your trailer. I'm John from John's Tech and Travel. Until next time, learn the tech, take a trip, and you'll love the journey.